Okay, so welcome back uh, to this video in which we're discussing the Human Genome Project, and now we're specifically discussing Sanger sequencing. So, uh, we have taken our bacterium with this uh, fra with one of these fragments which we got from the Restriction Digest, and we've extracted the plasmids. We have then subjected them to a heat of around 90 degrees Celsius to get them to cleave apart, basically. And now, we've added in this primer which will bind to this pink region on one of the two strands. Okay, now what we do is we're going to let this primer be extended. So we put in a, a DNA polymerase enzyme. So we add in our DNA polymerase enzyme. So here is DNA polymerase. And the whole point of putting this primer in is so that DNA polymerase can actually operate because DNA polymerase cannot actually start sequencing a complementary strand to a piece of DNA unless it has something to add nucleotides onto. So it needs this structure that's already here to add nucleotides onto, basically. So what DNA polymerase will do is it will move along here. So let's draw it. Um, here, let's say this is our DNA polymerase enzyme, it's going to move along this strand of DNA here and add on complementary organic bases to each of these green genes here. So if I continue this picture downwards here, then uh, potentially uh, down here, you'll have the green portion of the DNA, okay? Now, this will have a sequence of organic bases. So, for example, let's have A... A, T, G, G, etc. And what DNA polymerase will do is it will take a nucleotide and it will add it on here. And I want to just stress that um, this is the five prime end of this primer, and this is the three prime end of the primer. This is the three prime end of our anti-parallel piece of DNA, and this is the five prime end of our piece of DNA, okay? Uh, even the, well, basically, this strand is going this way. The five prime um, carbon is sticking in this direction. So let me just expand on that point a little bit more. So if I actually copy uh, a little bit of this out, you'll see what I mean. So if we look at, let's say, let's have a in detailed look at, in fact, I've got this orange pen open, so I might as well use that. Let's have an in detailed look at the structure of this bit, basically, and actually draw out. Uh, what it looks like in terms of the molecules. Don't worry, I won't do it atom by atom. Uh, but basically, if we draw this out, let's start with this thymine here. If this is the uh, ribose sugar, then uh, the 5' prime carbon will be sticking up here. Here's the phosphate group there. Okay, here's our thymine here. Okay, and then it's bonded to, uh, by hydrogen bonds, this adenine organic base here, but then uh, the sugar phosphate backbone on this other strand here is basically going in the opposite direction, so it's what's known as anti-parallel, i.e. one strand goes in one direction and the other goes in the other direction, so here is the uh, ribose sugar for this adenine and here it's the phosphate group coming off the 5' carbon. Okay, so if we continue this picture on a little bit, Here's the phosphate group of this next organic, um, uh, sorry, this next nucleotide, which is an adeni adenine. Okay, here's the 5' carbon. Here's the next ribose. And, oops, um, here is um, adenine here. Okay, and then it's hydrogen bonded to a thymine here, which is then bound to the second carbon of this ribose sugar here. Okay, and that's then bound like so along there. And then you have the 5' carbon coming off there and then the phosphate group. So that's what I mean by this strand having the 3' end over here because here's the 3' carbon and having its 5' end over here because here's the 5' carbon. It's going in this direction. 5' is over here, 3' is this way. Okay, whereas this strand here its 5' prime carbon is pointing in this direction, this direction here, and its 3' prime carbon is pointing down here, basically. Okay, now, DNA polymerase adds nucleotides onto the 3' prime end, i.e., 
it will bring another nucleotide in here, let's say like so, um, and it will add this phosphate group off the 5' prime carbon of this next nucleotide onto the 3' prime carbon of this nucleic acid which already exists, this piece of DNA which already exists. Okay, that's the way DNA polymerase works. It doesn't take this and add it onto the 5' prime end. It extends the DNA strand from the 3' prime end. So everything's set up to work here. What's going to happen is DNA polymerase is going to come along and it's going to add nucleotides on. So it's going to bring in the nucleotide, which is complementary to adenine, and it will add that one on. And then it will go to the next one along. Here's the free prime carbon now. It will add on another thymine here. And it will gradually, basically, extend uh, this primer so that you build the complementary strand to your fragment um, that is in the... Um, in the um, uh, Plasmid, that's the word I'm looking for. Right. Okay. Now, the killer idea. These terminator nucleotides. So, we've got our DNA polymerase. It will be working nice and happily as long as we give it ordinary nucleotides. So, as long as we give it adenine, thymine, uh, guanine, and cytosine nucleotides, it will quite happily continue this process and extend the strand. So indeed, we do give it those nucleotides. We give it the normal nucleotides it needs to extend the strand. Okay, but then we put in some special nucleotides, known as terminator nucleotides. Okay, so we need to now discuss what terminator nucleotides are going to do. Terminator nucleotides are basically altered nucleotides. They can be put in absolutely fine. So let me um, just discuss something. Uh, so you are again going to put in terminator nucleotides for adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. So you're going to put in terminator nucleotides for all four of them. Now, if a terminator nucleotide is added onto DNA, so let's say, um, how am I going to denote terminator nucleotides differently? Um, right, I'm going to put a little T down in the bottom to denote that it's a terminator nucleotide, okay? So we'll put a T down there to denote that it's a terminator nucleotide. So let's say the DNA polymerase just happens to add on the next nucleotide, which is a terminator nucleotide, okay? Then it adds it on just fine. Everything's going well, except now when it tries to add the next nucleotide on, uh, which would be a cytosine, it can't, basically. It cannot bind it to this other nucleotide here, this terminator nucleotide. And the reason is that this terminator nucleotide will not have a free hydroxyl group coming off the second carbon. So usually, off the um, second carbon, sorry, this third carbon, off the third carbon of ribose, you have a hydroxyl group. And that's the hydroxyl group that then is going to be uh, bound to, well, uh, you're going to bind this phosphate group onto that hydroxyl group. Basically, in terminator nucleotides, this hydroxyl group is not free and it's not ready to be bound. Okay, so you cannot add another nucleotide onto this terminator nucleotide. Right, okay, uh, so um, what the next trick is, is to also fluorescently label each terminator nucleotide a different colour. So, basically what you can do is you can add fluorescent molecules onto your terminator nucleotides. So let's say we're going to fluorescently label adenine in orange. Let's say we're going to fluorescently label thymine terminator nucleotides in purple. Let's say we're going to fluorescently label cytosine terminator nucleotides in green. And let's say we're going to fluorescently label uh, guanine terminator nucleotides in blue. Okay, and you'll see the importance of that later. Now, we have a huge number of plasmids. This reaction is happening in every single one of them. You are letting DNA polymerase extend the sequence until DNA polymerase happens to put in a terminator nucleotide instead of a normal nucleotide. Okay, 
Now, when is DNA polymerase going to put in the terminator nucleotide? Well, the answer is it could be anywhere, because we have all four types of organic base in this terminator nucleotide form. So it could put it in at any point along this green fragment, basically. Okay? Right. Now, um, this that's the important concept, that because we've got multiple... Um, plasmids up here, you're going to get this, uh, the replication of the DNA, the replication of this fragment is going to be terminated at different stages. So let me draw some pictures for this. So here's an example of where it could have been terminated. But if you've got enough plasmids, eventually what will happen is it will just so happen that the first ever nucleotide you put in was a terminated nucleotide. So what you will get is you will get this possibility. The, it, there's the possibility that the strand will be just a thymine terminator nucleotide, basically, which we now know is going to be fluorescently labeled purple, so I'll underline it purple. And of course, it will have the, um, the primer as well. Okay, so you'll have the primer as well in this complementary strand, but that's all the DNA polymerase will be able to synthesize. It will have the primer, and then it will have only added one nucleotide in, and that will be in the terminator nucleotide, and then things stopped. Now, the other possibility, the next possibility, is that it, add, it, had the, it put in the first nucleotide as a normal nucleotide, okay? So it managed to put in a normal nucleotide as in that first slot, but then in the second slot, it put in a terminator thymine nucleotide. And again, if you have enough plasmids, that will eventually happen. It will happen in one. Okay, right. And then we've seen the third example where you put in an adenine as your third terminator nucleotide. So you put in normal thymines. And then in the third socket, you put in a terminator adenine nucleotide. And I should be pointing out that this one will be fluorescently labeled pink and this one will be fluorescently labelled orange. And again, upstream of it, you will have the primer. So my point is that absolutely every single possibility that could happen will happen at some point. So you will get the, uh, se the sequencing of the complementary strand to this green fragment terminated at every possible organic base there. And depending on which organic base was at each position, the strand will be coloured a different colour fluorescently, basically. So, uh, the first strand was coloured pink because the first, um, the first organic base in the orange fragment, uh, the green fragment rather, was a thymine terminator nucleotide, and then it continues. So, basically, from this we can infer um, what the order of the organic bases is, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.